We are making chicken Caesar grinders and you are going to love them. They've been sweeping the internet. I've had a ton of you ask me for my take on it. It's really easy. It's a chicken Caesar hoagie, a chicken Caesar sandwich, chicken Caesar grinder, whatever you want to call it. It's dynamite, crispy bread, crispy cutlet, romaine, Caesar dressing, all together, one mouthful of amazingness. We are going to roll right into it and we're going to start with the chicken cutlets. Now it's really important that your chicken is nice and thin. Of course, mine's already clean, pounded nice and thinly. This is what you want it to look like because you want that cutlet to be so crispy and thin that when you layer your sandwich, it doesn't feel really overwhelming. It doesn't feel, um, just basically it doesn't feel too thick in your mouth. I don't know how to describe it, but everything has to be just right. The color has to be thin and really crispy and it's just, just you wait. We've got our chicken. We're going to season this really simply with some salt and pepper on both sides. This is pretty classic, you know, I'm going to season everything else as I go as well. Pretty classic sort of cutlet situation. I really don't flour mine anymore because I find that when you do, um, the coating doesn't stay on as well. I think the coating kind of tends to get that really weird uh, film and it peels off the chicken in one go, which really, again, does not sit well with me. So I just get rid of that and I add some parm to the eggs and it allows the eggs to adhere really nicely, skipping the step of having to dredge them in some flour. I'm gonna do salt on the other side and some pepper. And now these are gonna just sit aside. I'm trying to do everything here so that you can see. So just bear with me. I'm gonna just take my eggs, adding just a small splash of milk to them. Let me grab my, I'm gonna my grater. Where's my grater? I have like 17 of them and they're all hitting all over the place. Let me get my grater, hold on. I'm gonna add some parm directly to that. Add some parm to the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumb are a mixture of plain breadcrumbs and panko because I want it to give me super wonderful texture. Whisk those babies up. I've got my shallow Dutch oven here. You can use any skillet you've got around preheating with some veg oil or any frying oil of your liking. Just don't use something like regular olive oil or especially extra virgin. It'll burn and that fruitiness will turn bitter and then you wasted pricey olive oil on that, which you don't want. Mix everything for your breadcrumbs really nicely and then you're just gonna, you know, the, the basic principles of this. You know what you're doing in here, like that, in your breading situation, switch hands. Make sure you really pat that into the chicken and then just set it aside. I'm actually just going to put it on this plate so that I don't dirty up that one until it looks like that. And you're just gonna lay it down and just let them sit until your oil is up to temperature. Oil is nice and hot. Always lay anything you're frying away from the face, never towards your face. I like a nice deep fry for this because I want the cutlets to be so crispy. I want them to be so lusciously golden. Smell of my childhood right there. I'm gonna let those get nice and crispy, um, clear up a little bit, and once all my cutlets are a nice golden brown color, which trust me, will take about two to three minutes per side, if that, because they're so thin and gorgeous and glorious, as all good cutlets should be, um, then I will, you know, show you the next step. I mean, they're looking gorgeous already. Look at this. You can start to see the edges are crisping up. See that? Oh yeah. You can turn your whole pan around if one side of your pan is hotter than the other. Um, your burner, really. Or you can just lift them off like that. Cutlets are done. They're crispy, they're gorgeous. I like to put them on a wire rack so that they don't steam and um, get all weird, you know, and like soggy. I love to use hoagie rolls like this one. You can hollow out the center a little bit 
think it's nice just because then the salad mixture just kind of has somewhere to go. I'm gonna make a couple for now, then I'll deal with the rest later because this is gonna be our lunch, okay? The oven's preheated. Put a little olive oil on each one. Just throw these into the oven as is. They'll take like, I don't know, five minutes-ish, sort of, something like that. In the meantime, we're gonna make our, what I call my Caesar, ish dressing and it's mm, it just it coats the lettuce really nicely and it's to die okay I've got black pepper in my bowl in my bowl i'm gonna add a tiny remember i'm not making a huge amount because i'm only i'm only gonna be doing a couple sandwiches a little bit of mayo just trust the process oh i hate when that happens a tiny bit of mustard you need my knife, you need a knife. <laughs> you need a knife, you need a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of acidity. You need anchovy paste, not much. And I don't wanna hear I don't like anchovy paste because if you don't add anchovy paste here, it's gonna miss a really kind of pivotal flavor profile, which tastes nothing like fish, but it just like taste of umami goodness. Some garlic grated that in there a couple dashes of worcestershire worcestershire a little dash of red wine vinegar i'll have the recipe written for you of course but to be quite honest with you so much of this is to taste you have no idea get that all off my spoon i have all the garlic on my spoon of course okay now to this you're going to add a bit of olive oil like so. Let's whisk her around. I'm gonna add parmigiano. You can already, if you already have it grated, um, even better, because it makes the job super fast. But if not, this takes well, two seconds. Look at the crispity crunch. They just came out of the oven. As soon as they come out, you gotta take a, a clove of garlic and you're gonna just rub it and it infuses that garlicky flavor all over and just you wait, okay? Everything's ready. You just need to assemble. Okay, these are gonna be the sandwiches of the season. I am calling it now. This Caesar dressing is gonna be the only Caesar dressing you'll ever make going forward. The little bit of addition, the little addition of mayo, which is kind of new for me, sort of, makes it so that the dressing has that classic Caesar texture, but you're not having to use a raw egg to emulsify it all. It's perfection. It is delicious. It's cheesy. It's yummy. Mm. It's salty. It's so garlicky. Oh, oh yes. And I want this sandwich to be like, do mm. you know what I mean? It might be, mm. it might be delicious. Take your cutlet. I'm gonna do one and a half for this guy right here. Okay, like that. You take, you guys. I, I know you can't stand it. I know, I know, look at that. I know you can't stand it. Where's my serrated knife? I don't have it right here, so don't, don't judge me for what I'm about to do. I'm gonna squeeze it in there like that. Okay. Nowhere you go is gonna give you a sandwich like this, okay? I should have used a different knife. That's okay. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Love it. Uh-huh. That's it. None. Uh-huh. I cannot, okay? I'm sure I got things all on my face. The sight of a good sandwich, what can I tell ya? Mm-hmm. Mm. Go. Go make this, okay? Uh, you cannot imagine how good it is. 
I'm just telling you, you need to go make it. Recipe, down below on the website, you know. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. We need to be alone. I'll see you next time, bye.